Well, good afternoon, everyone. To Welcome to the uh, October 21st meeting of uh, the Gastonia City Council. October 21st. And uh, they're already talking Christmas here, sneaking up on us. But so glad to have everyone with us and also those that are watching by, uh, by TV. Uh, I would like to, first of all, start off by asking council and everyone to remember uh, our many many year uh, clerk Jenny Creighton uh, whose father died Sunday passed away Mr. John Brack funeral is Thursday um, also thank our deputy city clerk Regina Phillips for being here uh, in uh, Jenny's place so uh, Certainly, please remember the, the Brack family. And I'd like to ask at this time the uh, prayer be conducted by Councilman Dr. David Curling 
uh, after which we will all stand for Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Dr. Curley? Would you bow your heads with me, please? Lord, thank you for this beautiful day, for the sunshine that has shone down upon us. Thank you for allowing us to live in this wonderful country where we are free to speak as we please and exercise the many rights that we have as Americans. Lord, thank you for so many things that you've blessed us with, our families, our jobs, our loved ones around us, and as a city council and mayor for us to be able to serve the citizens of Gastonia. Lord, a special thanks tonight for the folks from Hillbilly's Barbecue and Steaks as well as Habitat for Humanity for all they have contributed to our community. Watch over us, help us through our deliberations this evening, bless us, and may we be safe on our way home tonight. All this we ask in your name. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. couple of uh, quick, well, let me just go ahead and have adoption of the agenda. Now, number, item 10 has been uh, pulled from the file, uh, from the uh, <laughs> agenda. Uh, item 10 has, uh, later. Uh, is there a motion to adopt? So moved. Second. Second. Second here. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. Um, like uh, to have Mr. Mayor, yes. I just want to make sure that everyone uh, in the audience understands item 10 involved Myers Memorial Church and New Hope Road, so that item has been moved if anybody is here for that item. Thank you. That, that is uh, the New Hope Riding Project and uh, Myers Memorial. Um, the approval of the minutes of the regular council meeting of September 16th. So uh, moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Raise your hand. Uh, I'm going to take just a moment before we go to item E for uh, what, well, two things. One, I didn't know I was, but uh, for a, ask for a, a, what we used to call in Raleigh a point of personal privilege. Uh, and that's to get to say about anything I want to say for a minute or two. One that I, I didn't know I was going to say is, if, if y'all don't look too closely, but I cannot believe what I saw that there's two more beards being grown over here, over here. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just unbelievable the, the, the what's going on with the facial hair here. But, uh, um, in, in all seriousness, uh, I want to thank y'all for uh, allowing me and, and, and working with me at the meeting of uh, uh, October the 7th uh, when I uh, had a little uh, minor uh, surgical procedure which is went, went super and uh, but I did want to be part of the of the program and be and listen to what's going on and uh, but I did understand that uh, that there was I've been told by several people that the the, the halls of uh, the, the walls of the City Council City Hall was just a barking dog that you heard dogs barking on that. Now, y'all are intelligent people, but I, I just wondered if you knew what the dog said to you. Because, and if you didn't, I'm going to help you with that. I think probably most of you know, know the language. Uh, Mr. Bombardier, put that up, and I'd like for the audience to see. This is what she, she was telling you that night, so just keep watching. There, there it is, right there. <laughs> Now, any questions? You're looking at looking at our attorney's shirt and tie, uh, but the, and that by the way, it looks just like her. But that's a picture. That's uh, that's what she told you that night. I just thought she she said it real quickly, but that's what. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. um, perfect timing for it. So, okay, out of me is award ceremonies and promotions committee. Uh, the um, Councilman Pearsall, and we'll go with the first one of a proclamation recognizing Hillbilly's Barbecue and Steaks on its 25th anniversary. Get, get hungry thinking about it. Okay. Yes, sir.
Thank you, Mayor. It's uh, my understanding that Mr. Gerald Duncan is here to accept this on behalf of Hillbillies. If you don't mind coming forward, Mr. Duncan, we'll read this proclamation. This proclamation says, whereas in June of 1989, Hillbillies Barbecue and Steaks was opened by Mr. Gerald Duncan at their first location on McCaddenville Road in Lowell, North Carolina. And in 1991, as the business grew, the second location was opened on Garrison Boulevard in Gastonia, North Carolina. And from the beginning, Mr. Duncan's philosophy was to serve great food at affordable prices. And with the help of family and dear friends, Hillbilly's Barbecue and Steaks has continued to remain a place where family and food are very important. And for the last 25 years, Hillbilly's Barbecue and Steaks has been serving the Gaston County area with famous pork and beef barbecue, juicy steaks, award-winning ribs, and the delicious chicken that is cooked over an open flame pit with hickory wood and the mouth-watering side dishes are made fresh every day and complement the meal. And throughout the years, Hillbilly's Barbecue and Steaks has demonstrated the importance of community service and has received numerous recognitions. In 2002, Hillbilly's received a certificate of appreciation for pro providing food for the American Red Cross shelters and was honored as an American Red Cross hero. In 2004, Hillbilly supported the 9th Annual Gaston County Toy Run for Kids. And in 2006, Hillbilly sponsored the Highland School of Technology Golf Tournament. And Hillbilly has also been an Oasis contributor for several years. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, John D. Bridgman, Mayor of the City of Gastonia, do hereby congratulate Hillbilly's Barbecue and Steaks on the occasion of their 25th anniversary and for their commitment and service to the community. And it is signed by the Mayor, John Bridgman. Congratulations, Mr. Thank Duncan. you very much. Thank you. Thank Would you like to say to you? Looking forward for another 25 years. And at this time, I'd like to ask if the mayor would join me at the podium. Uh, we have an award for uh, Habitat for Humanity. Counterparts with you. Good luck. Yes, we would, would like them. Okay. Mayor, don't be shy. <laughs> no, she's not shy. Oh. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Todd and I, if I may, read the uh, proclamation. There. Whereas uh, Habitat for Humanity of Gaston County was incorporated on December the 22nd, 1988 and officially affi affiliated with Hab Habitat International in early 1989. And whereas Habitat for Humanity of Gaston County strives to eliminate substandard housing by providing affordable shelter to those in need in Gastonia and Gaston County. Whereas Habitat for Humanity of Gaston County through partnerships with homeowners, volunteers, and sponsors uh, not only builds houses but builds homes, relationships, and neighborhoods where families in our local communities are offered a better life, where children are safe, where property values increase, and crime is re reduced, and where dreams of home ownership can become a reality. And whereas that there are many such havens in Gaston County because of the vision of Habitat for Humanity of Gaston County founders. Since 1989, Habitat for Humanity of Gaston County has completed 102 houses in Gaston County, 64 houses in Gastonia, 19 in Belmont, 7 in Mount Holly, 3 in Cherryville, 2 in Bessemer City, 5 in Dallas, and 2 in Lowell. And whereas the Habitat for Humanity of Gaston County Restore collects donations of household goods, furniture, and construction materials, and sells these gently used items at affordable prices to our citizens. This provides Habitat for Humanity of Gaston County with a regular source of income, and the recycling prevents more than 50 tons of materials being dumped in the Gaston County landfills annually. Now, therefore, the Mayor and the City Council of the City of Gastonia urge all members of the community to join Habitat for Humanity uh, of Gaston County in this year's celebration of their 25th anniversary 
and to honor our community's contribution to World Habitat Day observed on October the 6th, 2014. In witness whereof I have hereto, uh, hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Gastonia to be affixed this the 21st day of October in the year of our Lord 2014, John D. Bridgman, Mayor, and attested to by Deputy City Clerk Regina Phillips. That's just a sample. I mean, we could talk on and on and on. That's quite a record. That is really remarkable. And uh, it shows. It shows. And you've got wonderful people. And, but uh, y'all have a wonderful executive director, too. Uh, Mary, I'd like to present this to you. And if there's anything you'd like to say, please, and like to introduce, just please make yourself at home. Well, I just would like to say thank you to this council and to the city of Gastonia and to Gaston County. We would not do this great work without the support of all the people in this community. You know, I just think we've done wonderful things in the last 25 years and, you know, as we continue, uh, we hope we build 102 more houses in, in the next five years. You know, it's, it's just wonderful to be able to um, support a community and have housing for people who are in need of housing. And to me, what it does for the community, what it does for people in general is an amazing thing. So, you know, our board, um, you know, just we thank them and the support that they give to this organization and to our whole community. And we appreciate any and everything that you do for us. And, you know, continue, everybody. I, I see faces out here that have touched our house, houses. I see people that have been former board members, and I even see the master gardeners here. I mean, um, even um, Gerald, you know, Hillbilly's Barbecue's touched Habitat. I know he's donated a lot of food to Habitat in the past, and so it's a wonderful organization, and, you know, but we couldn't do it without you in this community, and I just say thank you so much. All of us, just police, if you would. Mm -hmm. Just, just, just go. Stand. They're waiting for you up there. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mary, keep up the great work. No. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for all your contributions. All right. Good to thank see you. you. Uh huh. Absolutely. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> Uh, you know, once again, um, Councillor, help me with this. But I, I guess we need a motion to excuse uh, Mayor Pro Tem Brenda Craig for uh, uh, she's out of town. Um, is there a motion to excuse? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Raise your hand, please. And also, uh, Mr. McAteer is under the weather, but you're going to tune him in at, at the. It's the proper time he wanted to, wanted That's to. correct. So okay. not so he'll be, him. We have to excuse him too. No, we do not. We okay. do not. He's All right. We're going to call him, we'll him call later. Him he won't be excused. Okay. That's fine. All right. And uh, yes, sir. I'd like to make a, um, a motion to recognize the proclamations for Hillbilly's Barbecue and also for Habitat for Humanity. Right. I'll second that. Discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I believe uh, item F, the presentation, Mr. Bill Starr is not here. You, you want to comment for him? Or maybe he can come to the next meeting, too. Yeah. Um, basically, Bill Starr is um, the Marine that does Toys for the Tots, and he's looking to start that up again. He wants to be able to put out boxes and that type of thing. So uh, if you have his number and you're listening, uh, please get in touch with him. Uh, the toys go to kids here in Gaston County. I know he helps with the least of these, and he also helps out with other organizations. Uh, he, his collections over the last two years have just multiplied and it's just helped out a lot of needy kids. So um, hopefully he'll be back at our next meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Yeah, he, he'd be in full dress uniform. Okay, um, thank you very much. We, I, we have one under public expression I uh, have one person that would like to speak. It's uh, each person is limited to a total of five minutes speaking time and uh, speak
speak what's on their mind and, and of course won't be any re reaction from the uh, from the council uh, mr. Gary Leslie 4052 Broadview Lane mr. Leslie Mr. Mayor, good evening, Councilman. Good evening. Uh, Mr. City Manager, good to see you again. Um, thank you for uh, allowing me a couple of minutes to, uh, to address you. It's a, it's a great privilege. I've uh, lived here in Gastonia for a couple of years, uh, transplant from the uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul area. And uh, I came across a great word uh, the other day, uh, fulminate. And uh, that's something I'm not going to do. I, I would like to maybe illuminate. I'm sure you get plenty of fulminating. Um, I uh, penned a story that uh, the Gazette published uh, earlier this summer called Angles and Energy. And it struck a favorable and positive tone about uh, a lot of the activity and uh, progress that I was sensing that was happening here in Gastonia and uh, in the Gaston County area. And uh, amongst those points I made, I used the metaphor, a flying metaphor, as a pilot, uh, of angles and energy, and the need many times to take complex situations and break them down to their basics. And whether it's in business, I was privileged to run a business for 27 years. Uh, I had a background in aviation. Uh, this metaphor for angles and energy has served me well because many times it's allowed me to look at things and break them down and try to understand them. And the culmination of my story ended up with some sentiments about our airport. And uh, I'm a romantic. Uh, we have a romantic, quaint airport. But I also feel very strongly that we have a great and significant potential here that we are missing. And I felt a certain civic responsibility to at least bring my sentiments to the council um, I've had the opportunity, Mr. Munn has been generous enough to give me some of his time out at the airport. Councilman Kimball has met with me. I feel strongly that uh, we are missing an opportunity. And um, I'm not one to make a, a comment and, and not be able to support it or step up. Again, I, I feel that's part of my, my civic responsibility. Um, and it's really not about airports. I see what we have here as the opportunity to develop what I call a portal to progress. If we focus on what we have in terms of a runway, an airport that was built one year after the end of World War II, and for all practical purposes is the same airport, and we look around us and our desire to compete, and we look at what's happening in a very close proximity at Lincolnton, at Shelby, at Concord, at Rock Hill. Um, we see airports that have taken advantage of funding that the FAA makes advantage of, takes, uh, gives us access to our state. And I feel that we are missing a great opportunity to make Gastonia a tremendous location for expansion, for progress, for economic de development. Um, I've got some sentiments about our current location where our airport is, our opportunity to create something that would be unique and put Gastonia in a class of one, I felt strongly that I wanted to air these thoughts. I did not want to look back and have somebody say to me at some point, hey, Gary, did you ever address your city council? Did you ever share those thoughts with the people that you know, care about these issues? So in this short amount of time, basically, I wanted to kind of put a punctuation mark to the story I wrote earlier in the summer to have the opportunity to address you folks, to address the city in earnest, and to say, we have a great opportunity here because of our location, the progress I see taking place here in Gastonia. And uh, if we don't get focused on airplanes and airports and think about a portal to progress to drive us where we want to be 10, 15, 20 years down the road, we can be in a class of one here. And I appreciate the chance to share those sentiments with you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, not to respond directly to Mr. Leslie, but I would uh, like to ask my uh, associated members on the Transportation Committee if we can take a more uh, wide view of what possibly the airport could do for us down the future as far as an income producer. 
I've had the, um, the good fortune to speak with uh, Mr. Leslie and some other people that I know it opened my eyes as to uh, a number of the opportunities that are out there and uh, the ways in which the uh, FAA and other federal agencies want us to succeed in a larger way. So I hope, gentlemen, that uh, maybe at our next meeting we can go ahead and, and take a look at that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank okay. You. Uh, I think we'll go ahead now into the uh, consent agenda. Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second? second. Discussion? All in favor, please? Raise your hand. Okay. <clears throat> Moving along to the uh, item nine, the uh, regular agenda. Uh, resolution of support for a Blue Star Memorial Marker. Presentation by our own Pat Johnson. Uh, Gastonia, Gastonia Beautiful. <laughs> Keep Gastonia Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, beautiful too. Keep Gastonia, Keep Gastonia Beautiful Gastonia Administrator. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is Monica going to be? She yeah. will. Okay. Um, I'm just going to introduce her. Um, mm -hmm. Keep Gastonia Beautiful has been working along with the Gastonia Council of Garden Clubs to acquire a designation for the Blue Star Memorial Highway. We have worked with various garden clubs for over 20 years on many beautification projects throughout our city. This particular project will be a significant commemorative tribute, and to present the actual specifics is Monica Haney, President of the Gastonia Council of Garden Clubs. Okay. Yes, yeah, she wants her backup. Yes, yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's great. Garden Club members here. Would you come here? Pat. Pat. Okay. okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Council uh, members, I uh, want to thank you for this opportunity to speak to you on behalf of the Gastonia Council of Garden Clubs and our three national affiliated garden clubs, the uh, Four Seasons Garden Club, the Green Acres, and the Azaleas. Uh, first of all, I'd like to give you a brief history of the Blue Star Memorial Project, which is a national garden club program. At the end of World War II, there were many public-spirited groups who wished to honor the servicemen and women who had served so valiantly. In 1944, uh, the New Jersey Garden Club Chairman, uh, Mrs. Lewis Hull, and the uh, Roadside Chairman, Mrs. Vance Hood, came up with an inspired idea. Uh, they wished to create a living memorial that would beautify the country for which these people had fought. Uh, they called their, uh, their memorial consisted of uh, 1,000 dogwood trees that were planted along a five-mile stretch of New Jersey Highway. They called this highway the Blue Star uh, uh, Road, <laughs> okay? And, uh, they, the term Blue Star came from the prominent Blue Star that was on the service flag that uh, was a symbol of pride and uh, hope. The service flag hung in the uh, front window of the homes of uh, families that had a member that served in, uh, in, during the war. Um, it wasn't long before their project caught national attention, and in 1946, the National Garden Club uh, adopted the Blue Star Highway Memorial Program. And uh, by 1948, uh, Mrs. Frederick Kellogg had designed a seven-foot cast aluminum uh, marker with a prominent blue star and raised lettering that would identify these uh, memorial plantings. Uh, the way the program worked was this. Uh, the garden clubs would purchase the sign and the plantings, and then the highway department would do the planting and do the maintaining of the site. Uh, this program took off, and by 1941, or excuse me, 49, there were um, uh, 31 states and 16,000 miles uh, that were part of the Blue uh, Star Highway Memorial Program. Uh, in 1951, the original mission of the Blue Star Memorial Program was broadened. At first, it was created to honor those who had served in World War II. 
uh, at this point in 1951, it was broadened to include all those servicemen who had uh, served, who were serving or will serve in the armed forces of the United States. Uh, since 1981, two more markers have been added to the Blue Star Memorial Program. One is a small plaque which is meant to uh, mount on stone or masonry and is used in parks or historical sites. The second is uh, very similar to the highway marker, which is the seven foot one, uh, that is used to, uh, with, with a little different wording, that is used at VA centers and also at national cemeteries. Uh, there are currently uh, 2,574 Blue Star markers in the United States. There are 33 in the state of Mich uh, excuse me, of North Carolina. I'm forgetting where I live. <laughs> in the state of North Carolina. And the one that we propose will be the uh, first one in Gaston County. Uh, in the spring of this year, uh, the Garden Club members voted to uh, pursue the Blue Star Memorial Project as a council project. Uh, at that time, uh, our goal was a plaque. We're not a very moneyed group, so we thought we could handle the plaque and have it uh, mounted on a stone in either uh, Lineberger Park or a location in downtown. Uh, when we were seeking approval for the site, I met up with uh, Pat Johnson, who is incredible, and uh, she helped guide us through the program. And then all of a sudden, Ed Munn came on board and everything blossomed. And uh, he let us know that there was funding from the city that we could use to purchase a bigger marker. And he encouraged us to have uh, Franklin Boulevard designated as a Blue Star Memorial Highway. Uh, Representative Baumgartner and uh, Derek Smith have been most helpful in uh, getting 74 uh, designated as a Blue Star Highway. And this is still in, the pro in process. Uh, we're currently ready to order the sign. And our next uh, goal is to plan an appropriate and patriotic dedication for uh, May of 2015. Um, in all of this, I would love to thank Pat Johnson, <laughs> Ed Munn, the city of Gastonia, uh, Representative Baumgartner, and Derek Smith for their uh, uh, guidance for their financial support and their enthusiasm in this project. I'd also like to thank all the members of our garden clubs who voted to take on this project. And in final, in, uh, here as an ending to this little presentation, I'd like to uh, uh, speak for all of us. And it's my hope, that it's our hope, that when our servicemen who've served so selflessly and willingly to, uh, uh, for our country, that when they look upon this sign, that they will, uh, or this memorial, that they will uh, feel our deep appreciation for their dedication to protecting our freedom. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Monica. Any questions or comments? Just one. Yes, sir. Do you happen to have a picture of that that we could put up and show people what it looked like yes, sir. Um, at home? Here it is, oh, right there. there. It is. Oh, we just have it up there? Okay. I, didn't, I see it now. Okay. Yes. okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, Any other questions? Yes, sir. Doc. What was that? that? Just one? Okay. Go have on. you determined where this marker is going to be placed? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. It's going to be at Franklin and Marietta. Right. Okay. Wells, Wells Fargo. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Just okay. I'd like to make a motion. Yes, sir. That we accept. Um, the Blue Star Memorial, and really be really grateful for putting the initiative forward a whole bunch. Uh, thank you, ladies, and, and all. This is excellent, especially for our armed service people. Um, really, to remember, to memorialize this, especially on Franklin Boulevard, it's excellent. Thank you. I'll second. Second. That. second. Okay. Discussion? Any more? All in favor? Please raise your hand. It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me say, m m great words that you, you said, and, uh, uh, and s especially uh, as we talked about Pat Johnson, who's listening to Flip right now. But we'll get her in a second. Uh, Pat, in behalf of the, the, the council, uh, certainly we, our hearts have been with you in the last little while, and, and um, 
We're thinking of you. Thank you. And we appreciate you. That. Well, thank you. Can I say something? Yes, sir. Pat, I saw you out there with a bunch of ladies uh, planting the pansies uh, downtown. Were some of these ladies there? Yes. Um, that was really, really nice. This Master Gardener group is phenomenal. They help us with Yard of the Week. They help us with different beautification projects. And Monday, yesterday, we had 12 that planted all the pansies downtown. We plan planted 45 flats of pansies downtown yesterday. So um, hats off to them. They're always there. They never hesitate to help us, and we couldn't do our work without them. So we appreciate them, and thank you for recognizing them for that. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, you want me to wait a second? Um, <clears throat> Mr. McAteer, can you hear us? Very good. So we're on. Okay. Councilman, you can hear us okay, can you? Can you hear us? Can, did you hear that? Oh, yes, I hear okay. you very well. All right. Uh, item 11 is a transitional operations agreement for the Gastonia's Conference Center and Budget. A uh, presentation by Mr. Ed Munn, City Manager. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, we have been working uh, with uh, Mr. Julius, uh, his uh, firm uh, Stellar Platinum, which is now organized as Gastonia Conference Center LLC, to develop a transitional agreement. And that agreement is included in your agenda. We'll go through that. Uh, I want to thank uh, Flip Bombardier and, and Melody Brady and Christy Crisp, who have labored as well as Ash Smith, who have labored on the details of this. Uh, it's a complicated matter when we're doing a transition contract and we're moving from one management team to another. But all the way through this, we have uh, to the customers of the conference center, you know, that's where our commitment is. This is what we talked about the other night, and that remains our, our entire focus, that there may be changes in your management team from time to time, but the quality and the, manage, the way that the conference center presents itself will always be done in a very quality way, and uh, we will be committed to our customers. Now, the the, uh, as we have gotten more information uh, on, on the bookings, and this, some of this is the software that, that we just received, uh, it, it's, it's clear that probably November and December will not be as strong a month as perhaps the budget that you have in front of you, whether it's the one that uh, you know, we've developed uh, previously with the city staff or whether the, the one you're looking at with, with Mr. Julius. Uh, it is the work that is done today at a conference center, really uh, whatever you're, it's, a, it's almost like planting a garden. Uh, when you're doing the w good work now, it will actually come, the, the, the plants will pop up two or three, four or five or six months later. So a lot of the work that we will be doing and the success uh, for the conference center uh, with working with Mr. Julius's firm, uh, that, that will be evident in, in the spring. So one of the things that we are talking about is that there is a fund balance in our in in the um, uh, in the in the fund the the conference center fund of seventy five thousand two hundred eighty two dollars. Uh, that that money is a fund balance, but we'd like to convert that to a contingency. So as we move forward, that we'll be able to use those funds as necessary. We have a pretty good handle on expenses. The revenues are really the, the question. Uh, as you go forward, the more successful you are with a conference center and the more customers you get, uh, whether it's a business uh, customers or, or all of the folks from our own community and people outside, that's really what's going to drive this conference center. Uh, to, that, to that end, uh, if look at the budget, uh, or excuse me, the uh, agreement, if you look on page three of the agreement, one of the things that's a little different from what we've done before is there is an event deposit account. Previously, the event deposits were mixed with all other revenues. Uh, we're separating that so that that can be accounted for. And this is so that if you're getting a deposit for an event that will be held later on, that those funds are, are segregated. Also on page five, uh, 
this talks about uh, actions to be taken at the conclusion of this agreement. This is a transition agreement. This transition period starts November the 1st and runs to June 30th. So that uh, there are specific, and there are very specific wording here about how this contract would end and, and what, what, is, what is in that. Uh, the budget is set forth on page uh, seven, and this is uh, section 6.1. And uh, within this, within this uh, structure is where we would uh, have the, the potential, if necessary, if we have to use that contingency money during the next, from now till June, that we would be able to use those funds. And if you move forward to the, uh, to the end of the, of the contract, uh, towards the uh, page 13, uh, we discuss about the termination clauses, 60-day uh, termination clause, 30 days with, with any kind of uh, cause, uh, default. Uh, the monthly communications, which we think are really important, uh, the same information that you've received with regard to events and also with regard to the finances will still go to City Council. We're also recommending that we work with the Facilities Committee and have that Facilities Committee committee meet regularly with the, the management company and with the city staff as we, as we go forward. So uh, in moving in this direction, uh, we would, uh, if the motion would come forward to approve this, uh, the wording that we would like to have would follow like this. A motion to approve the contract is shown in Exhibit 11, subject to any final modifications as approved by the city's legal department. This motion also includes authorization to process applicable budget amendment through the city's finance department, setting up an additional contingency account in the amount of 75,282 for the utilization as needed through this transition period. Staff is further directed to report monthly to the City Facilities and Management Committee on the ongoing transition process. And with that, uh, the staff and, and, and the City Attorney and I are here to answer any questions the Council may have. Questions, yes, Mr. Kimball. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Ed or Ash, uh, my recollection is that in, in addition, we also voted to um, have the ability um, uh, at our discretion to use a um, consultant uh, corporation or entity to further analyze uh, the conference center operations at any point during this process. Is that something that needs to be in here or I'm, I'm just wasn't, wasn't certain? It's there, and I think we can. It's still active, and I think anytime we want that that as a resource, we can move forward. Okay, that this does not have to be. It in does there. not have to be mentioned there. We can do it anytime we need to. Thank you, Mr. Yes, sir. Yourself, Mr. Munn, Having been through this one time before, and certainly don't want to make it sound like I'm speaking disparagingly about Sterling Silver. We don't like the performance. What does it cost us to get out of this? Bottom line, what's the cost? Well, well, there is no early termination fee in this contract. It's an eight-month transition agreement. You know, we're responsible for paying the salaries of the staff. So um, the two the months into it, if we're not happy, we can... It's 60 days termination notice, and we would pay what is owed in terms of salaries. Okay. I, I just didn't see anything in there, so I didn't know if there was or not. Well, if it's such a short term, we, we, we yeah. took all of that out. We'll get to, you know, June 30th, July 1st. Obviously, we'll be negotiating something coming up to that that will be different, but this is a very short term transitional agreement for eight months, so there's no need for early termination fees in a document like that. Just one question. Um, I don't know if it's aimed for you, Ed, or, or Fred Julius, but the break-even point, is it a number of shows or is it an amount of money per month? Break-even for the conference center. Yeah. Yeah. Break-even for a conference center would, it would involve particularly working on the revenue side of the ledger uh, because 
you can only cut expenses so far to operate that facility. You have a base, a, I think actually uh, the Wilderman Group probably operated in terms of exp on the expenditure side about as cheaply as they could. But I think it's the revenue side where the opportunities are. And if you're ever going to get close to break even, and many centers never get, get to break even, but that's always been our goal. I mean, we would like to do that. Uh, but it is getting that center operating during the week and on weekends. And there are, there are many times right now when there aren't any activities. It's a beautiful facility and it's a wonderful asset to the city. And I think that's where the direction that I think Mr. Julius uh, needs to focus his attention. I believe that that's where he's headed and he could speak to that, I, I'm sure. But that's, that's, that would be the direction. And I think even when we've had consultants talk to us, that's what they say too. That's what you've got to focus on is getting activity and, and, and working on the revenue side of the equation. Is there anything um, for us to entertain Gaston College using some of those side rooms for classrooms at all, for downtown? That would bring people to downtown to um, allow business to happen and help flourish. Um, I don't know if you entertained that idea, but it's just something I wanted to put out there. Absolutely. I, th I think, you know, there, there, any, any group that you can get to, oper to utilize those meeting facilities, you, sh you should go after. Absolutely. Dave. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Munn, the uh, travel and tourism folks at one point were offering some funding for an additional sales position. Where does that fit into this contract or this equation? It's, it's separate from it. Uh, and uh, that, that was to focus on weekend activity and primarily to fill the hotels up for weekend activity and also they would be uh, housed in the conference center itself. But it, would be, it was a special sales effort to, to go after uh, weekend, weekend functions. Will, will that be implemented after this contract is Yes, we know, believe so. I mean, that, that, was, that, that was the direction and, and we, we will, once the new management team gets in the center, then we will be then moving with that as well. Okay. Yes, sir. Good. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Jim, to I think where you were kind of going with, with your question, it's my understanding and speaking to an independent consultant, and I think maybe Mr. Julius could speak to this um, more in depth than, than my knowledge is that there is a, uh, a break-even point for X number of uh, events with X number of patrons attending that event spending a certain level for food and drink. And there's a, my understanding is there's an X on, a, on the page where once we get there, and I don't know, Fred, you probably know that number better, that's when we move forward into the black from being from being in the red. So a lot of it is transitional in how big the event is, what the event type is, how much they spend. It, you know, it could be something you're indicating, a, a, like maybe a meeting is not going to be as much as say a wedding or an anniversary party mm -hmm. or something like that. But Fred, do you want to speak to that at all? Sure. I think that'll give us a little bit more clarity. But there is a, a formula for that. Thanks, Will. Mayor, City Council, um, my early um, budget reviews and forecasts show us at approximately $56,000 in gross revenue per, per month would, would break the month even. And so that is our goal. Um, as Mr. Kimball said, you know, you have to have that complete mix. You have to have the week, the weekly conference business. You need to have the weekend weddings, and putting like in in a hotel business, putting heads in beds. We need to fill the conference center. Bodies and rooms. <laughs> it's kind of where we need to be, and and plates in front of folks is is where I think we need to be. But thank you. That's that's what I was looking for. I didn't know that number. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question. 
and just bear with me because I'm just making sure I understand every step of this process because I don't want to do it again and I don't want to mess it up like it was before. So bear with me. We negotiated to get out of the contract with the Wilderman Group, correct? And we paid a certain fee to, to end that contract. Uh, we asked staff to look at a temporary managing group that would take that on. But part of what we negotiated with the Wilderman Group was to have the current manager of the facility released from a non-compete clause. Is that correct? Correct. So, if the current manager is still available to us and can continue the operations of the center uninterrupted, why are not we not weighing those two options together? Why are we not weighing continuing under the current manager with this option presented here tonight as to hiring another firm? Are, are we not going to be paying this firm a management fee? Similar, I mean, it may not be the same amount, but similar in, in the type that we paid to the Wilderman Group. Obviously, we're paying this firm a certain amount of money to come in and manage we would not be paying the current manager if he was a city employee, correct? We wouldn't be paying a management fee. And I guess I'm boiling it down to, when we ask staff to look at this, certainly this is an option. Since then, a second option has come up and available to us, but we're not seeing that in writing here. So we're gonna be voting on one of two options that we have without reviewing the second option. And I think that's what we didn't like the first go round when we were presented with the Wilderman Group renewing that contract. We didn't like the fact that there were other options out there and we weren't getting to review them. We were presented with one. Are we not in the same situation here tonight in that we have several options but we're only reviewing and voting on one? I, th I think they, they sent out a sheet that said that if they bring it in house, the city's going to be charging $28,000 more. Plus, we're going to be hiring extra employees, which goes along with health care, goes along with um, uh, 401k. So, so the bottom line is this is the most inexpensive way to handle this. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? I think it's more private. I mean, do we really want to bring it in-house? I myself want to keep it on the outside to allow private business to run it so private business will gain money have an incentive. I want to do what's the most we're inexpensive for the taxpayer because that's who's footing the bill. That's, that's where my concern is. Yeah, well, my concern, yeah, my concern is there too, Todd, but the one problem is do we want to bring it in-house and have government run it or do we want to have private industry run it? I've, I, might, I, for one, want private industry to run it um, and, you know, by them putting out that it, if we brought it in house, it'd be twenty-eight thousand uh, dollars more now, and with the government, anything escalates. I mean, there's not an incentive to rent it out afterwards once you bring it in house. I think private industry itself has Fre Fred has the best interest, so he can make some money, and that's a driving force behind it. Instead of just being, oh well, this is my job, and I get paid whether I rent it or not. So that's, that's my feeling on it, that's all. Yeah. Uh, j just for some uh, background, when, when the council, uh, we, we had an, uh, meetings in, in August and, and uh, uh, July and August, and in the August meeting, the council asked for uh, options, uh, sh short-term and long-term <coughs> options. And the council selected the option of Mr. Julius' firm and requested the staff do the negotiations for up to a year and we talked about transition and, and, and permanent. So then later, there got to be the negotiations with, with Wilderman, Mr. Wilderman, and there were the releases. Uh, one of the options at the time for the council was the city operating it. I think I gave the council maybe four or five different options. We could go out for a large RFP. We could combine the options, in fact. And so we've been working under the direction of the council to negotiate with, with Mr. Julius's firm. Uh, we also have provided information to you that, that, and I think I may have, I keep using this baseball analogy, that essentially the city is the backstop. 
you know, if, if, if there isn't a firm there uh, to work uh, the conference center, then the city will do it. I mean, the city operates the Shoe Museum and we, we, we can do that. Uh, with regard to who can do it less in, in a less expensive manner, uh, it, when we looked at some numbers, and in fact, as you could tell, I've had conversations with the members of city council and also provided you information, notice the numbers are changing a bit. Uh, it's because the forecast and forecasting these revenues and exactly where we're all going to be uh, is you, 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 can, you can do that, you know, forever. Uh, I think we're, we're pretty close. I think the city could operate it pretty close in, in terms of cost to the private sector. I think the private sector always brings an entrepreneurial spirit to it. I, I think that that's w always one of the advantages the private sector has. City's advantage tends to be accountability. Uh, you know, you're, you're, if you have it in-house, you, you, know you know what you have. You're, you're, you're just, and you, you are more directly in control. So I think any time you're looking at public versus private, that's the, that, that's the kind of debate. But we brought it back to the city council because the council requested us to negotiate with Mr. Julius. Uh, two different things that I wanted to ask you that may not sound too important, but, and, and just leaving people out of it altogether, but <clears throat> I, it, would it be a fair assumption that anyone that would enter into this agreement would, it would, they would want to, if it's a transitional eight months, at the end of those eight months, they would like to be the knight in shining armor to keep going uh, and to continue, I'm not just Fred, but anyone. Yeah, you, you would certainly think so. Yeah, and how does this affect, or is there any effect on the ABC license? Uh, with the ABC license, uh, whether the city would operate it, the city would have to get the license if Mr. Julius's firm is operating it, he has to get a separate license. Yes, there has to be a, wh whoever is operating the, the conference center has to have the, have the uh, the ABC license. Thank you. Questions? Anybody else? Yes, sir. Just a little bit of a uh, I'll get any feedback with Porter on the phone. Uh, to kind of go a little bit further on your comment, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I think that um, you're exactly right. At the end of the day, uh, be it Mr. Julius's firm or another one, really gets the chance to either sink or swim. And uh, that's a double edged sword. Uh, and I think Mr. Julius knows that and understands that. And secondly, um, I, I feel very strongly that we need to look at cost, but I think that we also need to look at efficiency and the potential for success as well as cost. Uh, I think that all of those things factor together. Sometimes I found in my life, and I think we found different times in, in, with our elected body here, sometimes cheapest is not always the best and the result that you get is not always, it, and sometimes you wish maybe you spent a little bit more, did things a little bit differently to get a better result. So that's, um, that's my perspective on that. Any other questions? Okay, anyone like to make a motion? I will make Order. a motion, sir. He's still there. He's oh, there. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Did, did he want Ask to say you have any questions? Uh, Mr. McIntyre, do you have any questions? I have no questions. Okay, motion. I will make the motion, Your Honor. I will make it reflective of what Mr. Munn outlined during his um, uh, summation of the contract. It was too, uh, I think, too much to go into detail. I'll make the motion to approve the contract as shown in Exhibit 11, subject to any final modifications as approved by the city's legal department. This motion also includes authorization to process applicable budget amendment through the city's finance department, setting up an additional contingency account in the amount of $75,282 for utilization as needed through this transition period. Staff is further directed to report monthly to the city council's facilities and management committee on the ongoing transition process. Uh, will be my motion. Thank you. Could you repeat that? Yes, I will, sir. <laughs> Is there a second to the motion? <laughs> second. All right. Discussion? All in favor? 
And Porter, you can just say it. Mr. McIntyre, how do you vote? I vote yes. Opposed? Okay. It, it does pass. Um, okay, item 12. Uh, ordinance amending the charter of the city of Gastonia to modify the mayor and council members' terms of office to provide for a two-year term for the office of mayor and staggered four-year terms for city council. Uh, the presentation, city attorney, Mr. Ash Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and council. <laughs> and uh, tonight <clears throat> is the, the final step, if council so chooses, with regard to changing the charter so that we have staggered terms for the city council and a two-year term for the mayor. You had the public hearing at your October 7th meeting, um, and so the matter is before you tonight for the pleasure of the council, the way that the language of the charter would be changed to reflect all those uh, changes is in your agenda, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Questions, Mr. Smith? I, I have one, and yes. Mayor Fuel indulge yes. me for one minute. Uh, I know we have Councilman McIntyre on the phone, so that's good. Uh, we are missing Councilwoman Craig. And I don't think it's necessarily going to change the outcome, but I know Councilwoman Craig really wanted to participate in this discussion um, and could not because of, of her location. And I know we've extended this courtesy, courtesy to some other council members. Um, I would like to make a motion that we uh, continue this item uh, and put it on the agenda for our next meeting and actually not take a vote this evening. Okay, there's a motion. That is a motion. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. No. Is there a question? <laughs> I mean, is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Discussion? Mr. McIntyre, any discussion? Oh, come on. Yeah, is that, is that your discussion? Uh, I'm opposed to putting it off. Well, you get a chance to vote. Okay. Any other? Yes, sir. No. I think it's... I think it's, it's worthy of, of a little bit of discussion, um, you know, because I know we've set precedent in the past to have council members be able to express their vote. Probably my only concern is I'm getting old and my memory fails me exactly <laughs> as to the process we've used in the past because I know typically the council person who was making that request, I, I seem to have heard it from them, I guess, maybe prior to the meeting in question, and unless you're speaking officially on her behalf at her request, which I assume you are, Councilman Pearsall? No, she, is, she did not request that I make this motion. I see, okay. In so conversations with her, she did indicate that she wanted to be present for the discussion. I see. Was not gonna be able to. Okay. And like I said, I don't, think it's going to change the outcome, but right. I think it, like I said, we've extended that courtesy to others, and I know she wanted to participate in the conversation, so. I, I would just say that the purpose of this vote is because it requires two votes, and in certain cases when we, you know, had two votes, we really haven't always had additional discussion for the second vote, and the fact that, um, Councilwoman Craig did not specifically request this postponement or continuance. Um, this this is the first vote because you couldn't vote on it at the oh, public is, hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. You, I, this this is the first I told reading. I was getting old. Yeah, this is the this is technically the first reading because this is a wrinkle in the statute that says you can't vote on it at the same meeting as the public hearing. So this is the first. That's reading. right. That's right. Okay. So, again, for clarification purposes, all right. Does this require a two-thirds majority vote? On the first reading, it does. So if it, if it were to pass by two-thirds tonight, it would be, in effect, absent a petition submitted, you know, overturning it. <coughs> if it does not pass on this first reading, or at the next meeting, if you continue it, and it, that, that will be the first reading as well because it's the first vote. Uh, if it was to be a 4-3 vote, that would require a second reading at the second meeting in November. Are you following me? Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? Yes, sir. 
so if this is voted down, the, the table, if this is voted down, then we vote on the, the ordinance itself? Yes, sir. Okay. And then the second reading, the second reading would be at our November 1st meeting? If, if well, there are six people tonight. Okay. okay. So if it's if it's defeated, it's defeated. If it's three three, it's defeated. If it's four two, it's going to pass, and there won't be a second reading. Okay. Because that's two thirds. Gotcha. Thank you. I'm sure, everybody's got that. Any other discussion? Okay. There is a motion on the floor to uh, move the this. To vote on this at the first meeting in November, yes, sir. Uh, with all members here, and there's a second. Uh, okay, all in favor of the motion, uh, raise your hand, please. Okay. And Mr. McIntyre, it was a two, four, and three against. Yeah. How do you vote, Mr. McIntyre? Yeah, I'm opposed to delaying. That motion fails 2 4. Okay. Um, is there a motion? To approve or Any other discussion? Whatever, whatever the reason. Yeah, what, yeah, what am I voting on? This? There's, there's not a motion yet, Mr. Mactor. There's not a motion. Okay. Right. Your Honor, I will make a motion to approve. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Now, discussion. Anyone? Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand. How do you vote, Mr. Mack, here? I vote to approve. All opposed? All right. It uh, is approved. It is approved. And that's all uh, for well, that I mean, item, I guess Mr. Mayor. two thirds or whatever yeah. it is. Yes, whatever sir, that's two thirds. thirds so, so it, it okay. will not be on the agenda again. Okay. All right. Well, one, two, three, four, yeah. <clears throat> it, we're, and we're through with you, Mr. Mack, here. We'll let you go. Hope you feel better. Thank you. Does he have a report? Okay. Um, that's item 12, and we're moving right along. It's Councilman Pearsall is item 13, the Facilities Management Committee report, which is number 13 in, the, in your agenda, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in the absence of Councilwoman Craig, who chairs the Facilities Management Committee, I will be giving that report for her. Uh, item number one. Uh, is offered to purchase 504 Chestnut Street, uh, parcel identification number 109798, and 506 Chestnut Street, which is parcel uh, ID number 109799. And the city received an offer to purchase the property at 504 and 506 South Chestnut for $1,000 each by Mr. Brian Dalton. Uh, the parcels are approximately 0.43 and 0 0.40 of an acre with tax values of $4,214 and $3,920, respectively. Uh, the properties were purchased in 1994 as part of the Chestnut Street Alignment Project, and at this time, the Chestnut Street Project has been removed from the road improvement list, and the properties have not been listed as surplus due to the possibility of development in the area. Um, if approved, the city would retain a general drainage, utilities, and sidewalk easement, along with temporary sidewalk construction easement, and this offer is subject to the upset bid process. Um, it should be noted that in the uh, committee's discussions, there, uh, part of these, both of these parcels are in a floodplain, and uh, building on them is going to be challenging somewhat. Um, therefore, the, the low price, uh, the city has no plans for these properties, and it's, uh, this is simply a way to get it back on the tax rolls. Uh, Mr. Dalton has expressed an, an interest in building on these properties, so um, that's going to uh, be a considerable expense to him dealing with the, the floodplain and so forth. So uh, the committee recommended two to zero um, to approve the resolution authorizing the upset bid process for sale of property at 504 South Chestnut Street and 506 South Chestnut Street. You got a motion? And I would like to make that in the form of a motion that the council approve this as well. There's a second. Oh, second here, sir. All right. Discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. All right, and item number two is, again, an offer to purchase. It's for Candlewick Way, parcel identification number 140962. Uh, the city received an offer to purchase a lot on Candlewick Way for $100 by the Planters Ridge Homeowners Association, and the property had originally been retained 
for future street right of way, but is currently only used for pedestrian access between two neighborhoods there. <coughs> the current tax value of the property is $1,656 and the lot size is 0 0.012 of an acre. If approved, the city would retain a general drainage, utilities, and sidewalk easement, and this offer is also uh, subject to the upset bid process. You'll see in your uh, agendas a little map. This is basically a sidewalk with some bushes. Mm -hmm. uh, the Homeowners Association for uh, the Candlewick neighborhood would like to purchase this. Currently, the city um, does the maintenance on this. This would take the maintenance responsibility off the city and put it on the Homeowners Association. And there again, turn, even though it's a very tiny piece of property, uh, I'll take it off of the city and put it back into uh, private tax roll. So uh, again, the committee voted two to zero to approve the resolution authorizing the upset bid process for the sale of property at Candlewick Way. And I would like to offer that in the form of a motion for the uh, council's approval as well, please. Second. Second motion. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Please raise your hand. It's unanimous. Okay. And uh, the final item that we uh, had, Your Honor, was item number three, which was the follow-up discussion on donation of property at 2749 South York Road, parcel identification number 114851. The committee had uh, heard... Uh, some discussion on this property earlier. Uh, the owner was willing to donate that to the city. Uh, it does, uh, you can see in your agenda uh, maps on that, and it, it does adjoin in um, certain sections some property owned by the county, and therefore we were interested in seeing if that property could be utilized. We had our Parks and Rec Department as well as some other city staff look into that. Uh, if there was a possibility of working something with the county or maybe a, some type of pocket park, uh, anything the city could do, you know, you don't want to, to turn away a gift. Uh, unfortunately, um, because of the topography of the land, um, this is basically one huge gully. Uh, Parks and Rec has said that they can find no use for this, including uh, a bike trail. They said that the, the uh, topography is not even good for a bike trail. Um, so at this time, the city has no use for this. Uh, we feel like it would be a maintenance issue. Uh, very tough to maintain, very tough to mow, keep clean, and we don't want to take on that responsibility. So the committee voted unanimously uh, two to zero to not accept the donation of the property at 2749 <coughs> South York Road. And I'd like to bring that forward in the form of a motion for the council also to um, not accept this property. Sure. Second. Second here. Okay, discussion. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. And, and I should have noted that uh, the reason the votes are two to zero is Mr. Cullen was not able to make our, our committee meeting, and we knew that ahead of time. We had some problems with scheduling between the three of us, and uh, we excused Mr. Cullen from that meeting. But that is the reason for the two to zero votes on these. So I uh, wanted to point that out. That we did excuse sure. Mr. Curlin from that. And that's the end of my report. That's it. Okay. Um, thank you, sir. Item 14, City Attorney's Report. Mr. Smith. Uh, <clears throat> the mayor's already drawn attention to my tie, so I just want to mm -hmm. say another shout out to all the breast cancer survivors out there. You never know uh, who they are and where they are, but we do appreciate uh, them. And uh, uh, Councilman Craig's not here tonight, but she's always a big fan of this tie, and this is for her and all the other ladies out there. So thank you, that's it. Thank you, sir. Uh, item 15, city manager's report. Mr. Munn. Uh, no report. Who? Okay. Who's playing it? He's give out, he's give playing? out. Who's playing it? <laughs> uh, uh, no, yeah. Actually, I, I could give a report, but uh, no. No, no, no you don't really have to. Uh, but thank you, sir. <laughs> um, city council report. I uh, just uh, very quickly, Mayor, uh, it is uh, breast cancer awareness, and uh, I would like to mention my mother, who is a survivor, Nancy Pearsall. Um, she is cancer-free and a survivor, and certainly very important to me. Um, and the only other thing I have is um, the Mayor's Youth Leadership Council has started back up. We have a fine group of, of young people starting that, and uh, we had great attendance at, at the second, actually, second meeting yesterday. They had a... Uh, kind of get to know each other icebreaker session on Sunday 
and they're going to be doing some wonderful things in the community this school year. Uh, very, very eager group this go round. So uh, I look forward to bringing you some items along with the mayor that will be participating in that. So um, good group of kids, and I'm excited about that. Thank you, sure. Yes, sir. Um, just two things. One, um, I have a picture in the back of, I don't know if it's there, if they could, uh, there it is. Mm. Uh, that's oh. me walking my daughter Caroline down the aisle mm -hmm. um, back in September. Uh, it was a great time. And we just learned last Thursday that she has passed her Virginia bar exam and she is now an attorney. Mm. So oh, um, my. big, my big things going yeah. on. My condolences. Thank uh, you, Ash. Appreciate that. And that is my report, sir. Very Thank very you. Were you crying? Okay. Dr. Curl, we've been there, haven't we? <laughs> That's right. Well, I just want to take personal privilege to wish my daughter, Madeline, a uh, happy birthday. And she will have that birthday on Halloween. Ooh, that's so spooky. Good. It spooky. was spooky for her mother that day, <laughs> yeah. too. But uh, that's all I have. All right. Mr. Kimball. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, a, couple, a couple items. First, Rusty, could you uh, come up, please? I just wanted to give some really well-deserved uh, congratulations to um, all the folks involved in uh, the remediation project for the uh, creek, which is a tributary to the Duhart Creek. And I believe that's our first public-private partnership that we've moved forward on. And to the um, delight of all the residents, it's, I believe it's complete now, Rusty. So tell us a little bit about that. Yes, sir. That, um, that's one of the, the stormwater assistance projects that our, our stormwater utility offers. And as you'll recall, the, the program went through a little bit of a, a modification a while back, and it became more of a, a public-private partnership type of a scenario. And this was our first one. It involved uh, four property owners. Uh, they each had a lot of erosion in their backyard, and this involves a lot of stopes, slope stabilization on Armstrong Branch. Thank you very much. And thank you to all the folks that worked diligently there and gave the homeowners some relief. Ed, I'm going to uh, throw it back to you. What was it, about 12, 12 years in the making, I believe? Yeah. Right. I, I think it's somewhere around 10 or 12. Right. Thank you. Uh, the second item, um, Flip, uh, we've, I've gotten some requests from the uh, residents in the area of Aubrey Street, the soccer field there. Uh, can we ensure that after the games uh, we get our facilities folks by there to empty the trash cans? Apparently they get real full on the weekends and some of the animals get in and the, uh, the trash is going into a lot of the uh, neighbor neighborhood yards. They're open trash cans, barrels actually. And also the gate there, I visited that area today, the gate also needs repair. It's, it's somewhat broken. I don't know whether it actually it can be repaired. Uh, third item, uh, we had a wonderful police community meeting. You were missed, Your Honor, uh, at the Bradley Center. Uh, chief, thank you for attending with your uh, new assistant chiefs and also Mr. Mark McNeil, a member of our rental remediation program committee, uh, attended as well and brought forth some, uh, some excellent ideas for the committee. Uh, lastly, uh, at Gaston County Cancer Services, last night was their dinner and silent auction. They raised $1,500 and the folks at Round Bistro donated 15% of their net proceeds for the night uh, to cancer services as well. And last shout out, please save the date. April 24th, 2015 is going to be the Faces of Hope uh, dinner and silent auction, et cetera. Uh, a venue that we're very close to announcing. We're not going to announce it yet tonight. But the date is, I'm told, carved in stone. So uh, that's, that's something that's very exciting. And I was the very fortunate to be the top bidder last night on being able to go on the John Boy and Billy radio show in the morning. So I'm going to be really looking forward to that. And I don't know, have a date yet, but uh, I also got three great bottles of barbecue sauce and a signed John Boy and Billy picture. So I was ecstatic over that. Uh, that's my report, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh. Uh, Chief uh, Helton, do you, anything you want to say about the uh, sniper conference this weekend? The uh, 
the competitors from all around the United States, including a couple of teams from Canada, are all arriving into town. Um, the Sniper Conference kicks off Wednesday, goes through Saturday, and uh, it is open to the public. Saturday is uh, usually the day the public likes to come out. That's when they do the obstacle course, and um, you see all the teams participate and run that and then fire some shots from over there at the tower at the range. But a uh, great time. There's also some events there for the children um, and, and young people to uh, participate. But um, we'd love to invite anyone that would like to, uh, to come to come out. Yes. That's a question. What are the hours? It, it, um, Saturday, uh, it, it's uh, um, 8 to 2. Yes. Okay. Chief, what's the cost? It's, it's no cost. And uh, parking uh, can be tough out there at the range, but we do have shuttles to shuttle people up the hill. There's parking down below by the lake, and then we'll shuttle pe people, people up to the uh, range where the events are happening. So it's out at Rankin Lake? Yes. And the other question I have is, the little kids, do they shoot 22s or so? There's a uh, 22 rimfire sh shoot uh, that will be happening uh, where uh, young people can compete in that, and also a pellet shoot uh, as well, pellet gun shoot. And the gentleman that runs that, he's from Clemson or so, and he instructs the students? Yes. This fire safety arms? Yes. And is that free also? Yes, it is. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say our team was practicing today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> our team wasn't practicing, but they were running through the events to make sure everything was operating smoothly. Yes. I'm say I, I, yes. I heard that today. Yes. So yes. It, in my house, mm -hmm. you can hear the, the gun range, and today it was mm -hmm. particularly Particularly active. active. Yes. You now, staying, were you staying low today underneath the windows? <laughs> <laughs> How many teams are coming? I believe it's 48 teams. Wow. And now our teams do not compete. Our teams are the host. So we'll host the event and, and we do not compete. That's correct. Thank you, Chief. And the guy in charge is Clemson. <laughs> Rusty's listening to that. Yes. Okay. okay. Any other comments, questions? Thank you, sir, Chief. Um, Special thank you, uh, Ash, uh, of course, as Todd said about his mother, of course, Nan being a, a survivor, uh, which is a wonderful thing. Um, okay, uh, thank you everyone for being here, and uh, if there's a motion to adjourn. Okay, so let's go. Thank you. Turn that.